Hello and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast. Today we're talking about developing your power skills. These are things that used to be called soft skills and now have the more appropriate name of power skills. Today we talk about not only how you can use them in business, but also how they can extend to your broader life. Have a magical week. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. Uh, As we mentioned last week, you can either watch this or listen to this on Spotify. We're using the new feature, and it seems to be going really well. People seem to be really enjoying it. So if you haven't tested that out, jump over to Spotify and check it out there. While you're there, you can also give us five stars if you want. I dare you to do it. Uh, So... So it's five stars, and I think that's only appropriate because this podcast has five stars on it, um, and I'm going to include myself in that. So, (laughs) I love it, Jess. So let's jump in and work out who some of these voices are that are groaning at my uh, comedy. Let's start with John. John, how are you going? You're looking very dressed up today. How's things? Horrible after that line. Yeah, the five stars. Um, No, good. That's what I'm doing Awesome, awesome. Well, good to see. You. Good to see, you. Uh, Danette. I might jump onto you. How how are you going this week? Yeah, we've had a big week. We've driven all over the countryside, doing some farmer visits and some farmer workshops, and we got a flat tire yesterday, so we made it home about an hour ago. But we made it home safely, so that's awesome. <laughs> tough, tough. Well, well done for making it. Um, I might throw to someone who's in a new location today, Alan. Uh, how are you going and what's the new situation where you are? Oh, well, yes, I kind of share my office with my wife and today it's her turn. So, yes, I'm sitting out on the veranda. <laughs> like Danette said, yes, we've had a week of running some workshops with farmers and yeah, I've loved hanging out with Graham and Danette and talking a bit of farming, which yeah, I've been doing for quite a few years being a, a farmer. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. So very experienced. It's good to see. And for, and for people watching uh, at home, they can see Alan's new uh, look that he's got going on here, new background. So that's a, a reason to jump over to the Spotify video right there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Graham, how are you going this week? Hey, Jess. Uh, great to see everyone again. I am uh, I'm really well, thank you. Yes. Uh, one of the terrible trio i'm not sure if that's the correct term but yes we've been up and down part of new south wales this week done lots of k's um spent time with some amazing people but we won't talk anymore about the flat tire i think but it's uh, it's fantastic to be home We, we haven't been home for long but it's always good to be here again and great to see everybody else Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks, everyone. Good to see you all. Uh, I'm very excited to do this topic this week because we touched on it last week, which is uh, power skills. And in this case, it's actually developing your power skills. Um, and we were ta- we brought it up uh, last in last week's podcast, but I wanted to touch on it a bit more because I thought I hadn't really heard the term before. And I thought th- maybe other people that in our audience may also not have. So this could be a good week to refresh and then also learn how we can develop our own. So um, I might start with our first question here and I might throw it to you, Danette. Uh, so what, what are power skills? Like what power skills are there and what do they bring to business? Great questions, Jez. So um, some people may be familiar with the term soft skills. Um, and for many years that was sort of seen as they were lesser than the more technical or hard skills. A number of organisations recently have recognised that actually those soft skills are harder to develop and yet without them, we're unlikely to have run good businesses, good organisations. So things like leadership skills, emotional intelligence, being able to listen, being able to adapt, taking initiative, um, yep even being able to be creative or innovative, all of those things that if you think about, they assist us to future-proof ourselves and also our organisation. So for me, when I hear the word power skill, which I think is a much better way of phrasing them, it really is about how do we create great organisations that allow organisations to be sustainable through the future. And I think the other beautiful thing is when we focus on those power skills, we create more collaborative, nicer workplaces. So I'm sure a lot of people have heard about the great resignation that's sort of 
came when office workplaces started insisting people go back into the office rather than you know some sort of maybe hybrid model of some people working from home, some back in the office. So I think these skills really allow us to adapt and, and change whatever the environment. Um, so yeah, for me, they're awesome skills. Awesome. Thanks for that. That was, that was great. I feel like I learned a lot there and I think uh, you're right. It's a nice way to change from soft skills to power skills. I think reframes it for a lot of people. I might throw the same question to you, John. So what power skills are there um, and what do they bring to businesses? Well, I think Jeanette summed up the, uh, what, what power skills are there. Um, and really it helps to you need a balance of those sorts of things to actually make a team so if you're going to engage with other people you need to have some emotional intelligence to be able to read a room you need to be able to listen you need to be, you need to be able to communicate and those skills are the things that help develop and grow a team um, into a positive functioning team uh, without those things you know, it's less, less interaction um, and they may be able to develop a team. You need to grow and develop these skills. And as an individual, yeah, if you have these skills, as Danette said, it, it does future proof you going forward because they are skills that people need. Um, once upon a time, it was very much about skills for the job. Now it seems to be about how do you fit into our team or how do you fit into the culture that we want to develop as a workplace. So and these skills actually help you develop more be able to fit into a lot of different cultures for different workplaces. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, no, that's, and that's great, John. I, I love the idea. You use the word develop a lot, which I think is also quite a um, good word to use. I think in this context, you're growing in a way it's developing. So yeah, thanks for that, John. Um, I might throw it you, to- You're constantly developing with these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, awesome. you're constantly developing these things. It's not a- you know, go out and buy a pair of shoes and you've got the shoes, it's, you've actually got to develop them. Mm. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for that, John. Such a good insight. Uh, I'll throw it to Alan now. What power skills are there and what do they bring to businesses? The first thing coming up for me, Jez, is we don't know what we don't know. Even as Danette just listed off the power skills, then my mind went to you know, farming. Some farmers have got great mechanical abilities. Others are engineers. And one of the things that came up in our workshop was communication was one of the skills that, you know, we assume because we're communicating all the time, we've got communication skills. And the first time Graham said, you know, we all think we know how to communicate, but do we? That really challenged my thinking and helped me realise, no, that's not something that I guess I learnt from anybody other than the people around me who are in the same boat as me. We just did not know that, you know, we weren't great communicators and having that awareness is over my eyes where I haven't said to my wife this morning, we need to go off and actually learn to communicate because I can now say that's a weakness in not only our business, but our family as well. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Thanks for that, Alan. And um, I love the example that you gave there. It's so uh, I always love when a personal example comes in. So thank you so much for that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll throw it to you, Graham. Uh, what, what are some power skills and what do they bring to businesses? I, did, I um, was just trying to think of coming up with a slightly different angle because I, I think um, the three responses so far have ticked off all of the, the, the fundamental sort of power skills. So I was thinking uh, more along the lines of what are they being, bring to business and, and tapping into you know, John's comments around uh yeah you know, what do you bring to the team are you a fit for the team um how do you help grow the team etc and i like the analogy if you don't just go out and buy a pair of shoes uh, which for some of us is absolutely correct because i don't care about shoes except when there's a snake in the house different story so yeah power skills are more like we don't just go and buy the shoes and this also ties into al so I, I don't know what i don't know or we don't know what we don't know um developing power skills is, is actually more like making the shoe from scratch. Um, the good thing about that is that we, if it, using that analogy is that we're all expert shoemakers or we can be. So it's not like we, we don't know how to do it. We can learn how to do it really quickly, but it, it is very much building it. Um, the other thing I, I just want to touch on really quickly with the idea of what does it bring to business is we tend to focus a lot at the moment with power skills on, on how 
um, power skills enable us to you know, communicate better, to understand others better, to be more empathetic, to listen more effectively, to obviously to communicate better. Um, and I was thinking, you know, there's, there's also a, a huge potential for individuals within an organisation um, and even within uh, an organisation or a business where somebody doesn't necessarily work closely with other people. Now, it could be in a role where they are working a lot more with AI or, you know, with automation or that they just don't have um, a lot of connection day-to-day -day with other human beings, but how they conduct themselves and you know, how they respond to or react to the way that they interact, even with systems, is still important because that at some point, you know, when they finish work, they're going to interact with other human beings anyway. And their ability to manage themselves at the end of the day is going to have a huge impact on how they show up and how they influence others. So yeah, I th the thing I like about what they bring to business is uh, yes, it has an impact on, on the team, or it can, and on the people they work with, but there's also that potential to massively um, boost our own power skills. Mm. I'll stop there. I was just going to say that I love, I also love that inside of um, that not only is it just applicable to business, but these are skills that you can take beyond like the work hours and apply them. Even that's kind of what Alan was touching on as well, I guess, with the bringing the communication into the family part as well. So I love that. Um, yeah. yeah, great. It's not, I, I wasn't thinking of that at all. So I, I think that's a great insight. So thanks everybody. Um, I might stay with you, Graham, for this next uh, question, which is what are things that may hold us back from being good at power skills? Oh, look, the first one that comes to mind is a very short word, but can be a very big thing. And that's just ego. Uh, it's like, don't talk to me about boats. I know boats. You know, um, it's probably not a useful reference to a lot of people out there, but it's it's believing that I'm already awesome at EQ, for argument's sake. I've got great emotional intelligence. I'm so, so self-aware and I'm highly empathic. Um, or empathetic towards other people, you know, I've, I've pretty much got it nailed. So I don't really need to learn anything. But the, the biggest barrier from my perspective is um, that's going to hold us back from developing our power skills is just the, the noise in our head or the story in our head, if you want to call it that. Um, actually, Graham, that's reminded me. I was listening to uh, the Freakonomics podcast yesterday. And they were actually talking a little bit about this. They're talking about there's a phenomenon where... Um, most people wildly over uh, estimate their abilities uh, yep. with knowing things. And a good test that they use is that uh, they bring people into a room and they rate their, how well this person perceives their ability to understand something quite simple is like, how does a pen work? Right. Which seems obvious. And you, you basically have a scale of one to 10 and then yep. uh, they, they basically give this person a pen and say, how does it work? And then the person has to do, work out, do they know or do they not know? And often the second score that they do after they realize they have to explain how it works is much lower. Um, but it, it, but it's, uh, they were just saying that that's a broader metaphor towards um, a lot of other things where it's, we all vastly exaggerate, I think, in our own minds, how much we understand stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Good example. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, no, that's all right. It was very relevant to what I was listening to yesterday. So thank you for that. Um, Alan, I might throw it to you. What are some things that may hold us back from being good at power skills? Often, oh, me, Jess, uh, Graham just nailed it. It's our ego. It's, um, it's the feelings that come up. You know, I guess if I believe I'm good at communicating and then I realise I'm not good at communicating, it's almost like that throws my whole world into chaos because what else do I not know that, I'm not good at, and I guess my benchmark to know whether I'm learning things and I'm open is how comfortable I feel. If I feel really comfortable, my ego is in control and yes, I know it all versus if I feel really uncomfortable, I know I'm learning and I'm growing and there's a gift coming for me. That is a great way to phrase it, Alan. I love that uh, insight. Thank you for that. That's amazing. So it's such a good spin on it. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I might throw it to you, John. What are some th things that can get in the way and hold us back from being good at power skills? Well, I had something similar around the, I used, I didn't call it ego, I called it our own blind spots. Um, you know, and I've had someone say to me, I'm the humblest person I know. And you go, 
I think you're missing something. Um, but two other things that I'll throw in there is we forget that we all make mistakes. So rather than try, and I think it's building on what Alan was saying about how comfortable or uncomfortable you are, make mistakes. So try these things, you know, try new listening skills, try new communication skills, and be prepared that you're going to make mistakes and be okay with that. The other thing that I, I think really does hold us back, and, I, um, and, and it's a line out of uh, Mary Williams' poem, it's our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Um, it's, you know, rather than playing small and hiding in the darkness and just being, you know, invisible to a lot of things, actually go out there and make a difference. And it's our preparedness to, to go out and put ourselves out in front, be that poor poppy and get shot down, um, but get back up and go again. That's, you know, it is our light and not our darkness that does most frighten us and holds us back. Mm. And I love that as well. I love that. Um, tying that into Alan's thing. It's just such a, like, it's a, it's kind of a, um, almost like optimistic way in some ways to look at it because you're, you're basically saying like, what I'm actually good at is what is, frightens me, but it's, that is the thing that I should be pursuing in the, and it's the fear and the discomfort. That's the, actually the important part. So I love that. Awesome. Um, I might throw to, uh, to Danette now, what are some things that may hold us back from being good at uh, power skills? Yeah, so just adding to what everyone said, because they're really good points. Um, I think sometimes you can be in a workplace that actually discourages failure, discourages that growth in people. So I, I had a, a dear friend who their CEO wouldn't send their senior people to training because they didn't want them to get smarter than they were. And so it was actively discouraged. So, yeah, the, the power skills then would not be encouraged at all. I think sometimes personally people can just be exhausted or tired. You know, so if you're going through lots of change, you might be at that point of change fatigue, your resilience is low, et cetera. So we know when we're at that state, our ability to use those power skills drops because our brain's sort of firing more in the survival mechanism rather than the thinking mechanism. So that can also, um, you know, trigger people not to to want to grow their their skills or not have the time or capacity to do that the other one i'd say is sometimes people get to a role and I, we spoke about this on previous podcasts where they get to a role based on their technical skills and that was good because they were really just having to motivate themselves and then all of a sudden they now landed with the team and yeah, coming to Alan's point and John's point, they're suddenly uncomfortable with having to learn these skills. So they just hone in on, I'm just going to work more on my technical skills and hope that the rest works out. So they can be some reasons why people don't get that opportunity. Great question, Jess. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. And I also just wanted to touch on the first part of what you're talking about. And I think it also connects with your last answer. Um, and you're talking about the person that didn't want to sort of improve the technical skills or, or, of his uh, company or whatever. Um, and then I, I guess going back to your first answer about uh, these skills can help future proof you. So if we take that, uh, that example of that CEO, um, why without this training, is it not future proofing that company? Okay, so in that instance, um, that particular organisation, um, the CEO who was the person who made that decision not to invest in their people, they were getting close to retirement and so they just wanted to sort of, I suppose, coast along until they retired. And so for them, they didn't think about the legacy of what were they leaving behind once they, they left. And so that would have been someone else's, I suppose, mess to clean up afterwards um and really you know what happens is often you know, good people tend to leave because they're like well if you're not going to invest in me why would i stick around so it can have all sorts of consequences awesome <laughs> thank you for that um and i might stay with you uh now for our final question which is what are some ways to develop your power skills Great. And for those who are watching me on the video, I've got an itchy nose. So if I'm doing this, it's because my nose is itchy. Um, so a um, couple of things, you know, we obviously talk about journaling and stuff like that. But I think find someone who is good at it and maybe ask them to pull apart. You know, what are, if you had to give me two or three tips on how could I improve 
let's say it's innovation skills and let that person just give you some of the things that they do. Um, because um, at the end of the day, we can read about it, we can listen to it. But I think sometimes picking people's brains who are really good at it, it puts us in a little bit of discomfort, but we're also getting some tips to move forward quicker. So I think that's helpful. And given we've got the rest of the amazing group, I'm going to leave it there and everyone else can have a go. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks, Danette. Um, I might throw it to you, John. Uh, same question. What are some ways to develop your power skills? Yeah, look, I agree. I think asking for that feedback, now whether it's from you know a mentor and asking what do they do or how do they do it, but asking other people that you trust to provide feedback, am I good at this or how can I, what do you think I could do to improve and get something tangible to do. And you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater and start, you know, start your whole new personality, but just one or two things that you can tweak. Um, the other thing is practice and start now. So that, yeah, I'll leave it to others. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, no, no, thank you. That was a great answer. I think it's good. We're starting to get um, some good answers for people that may want to be trying this stuff out as well. So thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Alan, I'll throw it to you. What are some ways to develop your power skills? Uh, what comes up for me, Jez, is we become the average of the five people we hang around the most. And in the past, I hung around people that would blame and justify why we were right, everyone else was wrong. <laughs> where I realised that was holding me back, where now one of my benchmarks, as I said before, is are the people I'm hanging around with making me uncomfortable? That's when I know I'm doing something different. And a bit like John said, quite often I can make a mistake, yet that's me learning, that's me growing, and I'm working it out as I go along. Awesome. Awesome. And I love that. That's again, sort of taking it outside of the business context and within the social friendship one, which I love as well. So thanks for that, Alan. Uh, and I might throw it to Graham here. Uh, what are some ways to develop your power skills? Um, great answers from everyone else, so, which is really good. So coming sort of at the back end of all of those answers, I can just say everything they said. Um, is that a power skill? I'm not sure. I, for me, just a couple of quick things. Um, and this sort of goes back to what John said about not trying to change everything. Um, you know, don't try and make it too big and start. So for me, maybe you know, firstly get really clear on what power skills are and then identify just two that you want to build and get also get really clear about why you want to build them. So what's in it for you? Because one of the things that we need as human beings is some sort of incentive or motivation to change part of ourselves. So I think when we get really clear on, on how these are going to benefit me, you know, why it's going to be a good thing for me to do that. Uh, and then going back to what both Danette and Al said, you know, partly it's um, who are you hanging out with now? Are you uncomfortable? And who do you know is awesome at that power skill? So you don't learn from somebody who's already as good as you because that's pointless. Learn from somebody who's exceptional because they will stretch you. They will challenge you. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, all of those answers, I think, were brilliant. Just start small, start now, get uncomfortable. That's it. There's nothing left. Oh, uh, dear. Sorry, it's Friday. It's been a long week. <laughs> That's, that, I, I love it. I think that that, I think really, um, what I think does it the massive takeaway and a great slogan is get uncomfortable. I think that's a great one. Um, so thanks for that, Graham. Uh, I actually will stay with you, Graham, for final thoughts on developing your power skills. Um, yeah, go for it. it. Actually, if I can just go back to one thing that you've said a couple of times already, Jez, um, really important because we've sort of talked about power skills in the context of how they can help businesses. Um, also, massively important to keep in mind that. As human beings, we never completely compartmentalise work and non-work. So building our power skills as a human being is phenomenally important for not just for us personally, but for everybody else that we interact with on planet Earth. That's it. And that's a great takeaway. Thank you for that, Graham. Um, I'll throw it to you, Alan. Final thoughts on developing your power skills. Um, based on this week, of hanging around with Graham and Danette, the feedback I kept getting was as simple as get curious. It's looking for what, what don't I know that I don't know yet 
and it kept coming back to if it makes me feel uncomfortable that's the area to get curious about i love it i love it thank you alan um awesome i'll throw it to you john final thoughts on developing your power skills i guess when i'm when i'm teaching one of the things i say to anyone in the class who's doing the work take one thing away do something with it so you know even out of this podcast or any of the podcasts that you know we've done over the time what is what is one thing you're actually going to take away and make a conscious decision to do something about it and that's where you start getting the gold that's where you make a difference in your life and, and impact others I love that. And I, I love um as well. I think it's a great thing. Like I might go back and listen to some of the podcasts with that tip as well. Just that take something away and do something with it. I love it. So thanks for that, John. Um, and I'll throw this to you, Danette. Final thoughts on developing your power skill. Um, so for our leaders and future leaders that are listening in, um, and this adds to the bit you, you pulled off that podcast, Jez, um, is that the higher up you are, the lower your awareness. So one of the things our brain does when we get into leadership positions is it starts to dehumanise those around you. Because back in cave people days, if I had to make a decision about, you know, oh, there's someone, a saber-toothed tiger is chasing us, who's going to lose? If I had to think, oh, well, it's, it's, it's Al or it's John or it's Graham or it's Jez, I wouldn't make a decision. So what our brain does is actually go, they're just resources or whatever it does. So it dehumanizes. So our ability then to grow these power skills, we think as we go up in leadership, we get better at them, but actually it requires a lot more conscious effort to stay aware. And cause of course, people love giving feedback to their leaders. Not often. <laughs> so that awareness can yeah, is even more um, unlikely because people aren't necessarily feeling safe enough to give that feedback. And the last one I wanted to lead with, which um, sort of comes to what Al was saying before, is our um, lovely formula that we talk about all the time in our courses, change equals uncomfortable and uncomfortable equals your growth. So with the power skills, the more uncomfortable, the more curious you are, the more likely you are growing. So that's mine. Thanks, Jez. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for this podcast. It was so good. It was much more broad reaching than I was expecting when I set it out. So I want to thank everyone for bringing such cool insights that, you know, extended beyond business and stuff. That was amazing. Um, so I want to thank each of you for being on today. It's been great. And uh, we've been doing really well. I, I want to thank everybody that's been listening and spreading the word. We've been seeing a lot of new listeners. So thank you for that. It's always good to get new listeners in and enjoy the Magical Learning Podcast. As I said, you can watch this on Spotify. Jump on Spotify. You can find this podcast and you just watch it straight on the app or you can listen to it. It's up to you. Um, and also feel free to give us five stars for these five stars, as we mentioned at the top. I think it's only fair. Uh, <laughs> um, but I do want to thank everybody so much for being on today. It's been a great episode. So many good takeaways and definitely get uncomfortable is a great uh, tagline. So thank you all so much and um, I'll see you all next week. Brilliant. Thanks so Thanks, much, Jess. Thank you, John, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>